Hey and welcome to another episode of the Unspoken Truths of Digital Leadership, Living the Leadership Values. Where our guests will talk about the unspoken truths of leadership, the dark side and the learnings from dealing with conflict with integrity. And today I have the pleasure to have Louise Haiti. Thank you for hey, thank coming. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming on. So Louise, please tell us about yourself. Yeah, that's a very good question. Great start. So I'm um, I'm from Belgium originally. Let's start where it all began. I'm from Belgium. I've uh, had my career. So I lived in London. I lived in New York. And very recently, I moved to Lisbon as uh, the startup capital of Europe or the new startup capital of Europe. Um, I worked in, um, I always led teams in customer support and success, uh, working with teams all over the world. Um, and um, at the moment, I work for female executives um, and entrepreneurs and help them establish a better balance between work and life so they can thrive on both sides. Fantastic. How did you get into leadership? Uh, well, I fell into it a little bit. Um, well, I would say, you know, it just happens without me really realizing it. But actually, that's not true. It happened because somebody believed in me. And I think that's very important. So somebody in the company that I was working for approached me one morning at the elevator and said, hey, you know, there's this position coming up, um, which was the first leadership position um after my entry-level job that i was doing why don't you apply um and i remember to have come home and said like really me like could it be like could it be me i wasn't really believing it myself at that point um but that's really what rallied me of like yes of course i can do this and what led me to apply for the role wow okay yeah. and what learnings did you come through with dealing with conflicts and managing teams because in corporate companies as I understand that we worked um, corporate environments very high paced it's very intense there's a lot of corporate politics <laughs> as, as, as I like to put it yeah, yeah. how did you manage and uh, manage those kind of um, emotions and conflicts within teams oh well I think it's uh, first of all it's a learning curve of course um, coming on as a new leader, I was very young when I started to lead teams. I was 22 years old. Um, so there was a lot of people within the team that I managed that were older than me. And then obviously you kind of get a little bit of the heartache there. Um, and a lot of conflicts come from there. But what I did was just to always, first of all, get really close with the people, like try to understand what's in their world, um, what they want to create, where they're headed, um, and really be there um, as somebody that supports that mission, um, that supports what where they want to go. Um, so they can really start to see you as an, um, yeah, as, as a trust person and somebody that believes in them. Um, so I think that's that's the first thing. And then the second thing, it's like openness. I've always been very keen for the people that I was leading to advance, to get better, uh, to grow their skill sets, to give them more opportunity so they could also grow. Um, I've met leaders that like to keep people small. <laughs> um, and that's not really, um, that's not my philosophy. Um, I'm all about like sharing and working together as a team to get better um, the better where we identify weaknesses within ourselves personally, but also within others to level each other up. Well, how did you manage the, I guess, the leaders that kept people small? <laughs> I mean, did yeah. you have conflicts and, um, you know, disagreements and debates? I'm sure plenty of those must have gone on. Well, what I came to realize is you you only know so much and sometimes it's very hard to like i try not to judge um i don't always know what's going on in the lives of the leaders that i've had um and so i just approach it with uh with a sense of empathy towards them and knowing that something you know else must not sit right uh which is why they are projecting it in this way within the company um 
so yeah it's you you adapt like you play the cards differently you play your own cards differently if that's if that's what's going on within an organization um but if it would be my company it would definitely not be the way i would want to you know want people to to lead i really want people to work on bringing the best out of others and how did you manage your own emotions when it comes to heavy debate and stress and things that we don't talk about within leadership? Uh, yeah, I think it's about communication. Communication is key. And again, it's uh, it's so important to establish an open platform and where people feel hurt and can talk about those feelings. Um, so it's something that one of my managers really worked on um, having a regular one-on-ones where we're not just talking about work performance, but we're also keeping keeping it on a personal level and we know what's going on in each other's worlds. Um, and I think that's important to, to be able to express how you feel and to be able to express if something doesn't feel right or if an approach that's being taken, um, if you don't feel that's the right approach that, that can be discussed. Um, it's not necessarily as, you know, you can disagree and it's okay. It's okay to agree or disagree. Like there's no right or wrong, uh, but to kind of can, if you're able to work together to find that middle ground, I think that's, that's what leadership is all about in teamwork. And do you have hobbies or uh, habits that you do that helps you manage tension and stress and, and those things that go on? Oh, well, I think there's a, a lot of self-awareness, first of all. I think, um, you know, there's leaders out there. Like, I think a great leader is definitely somebody that's very self-aware, uh, that knows the emotions that come up and can place them in a bigger perspective um, or knows how to deal with those emotions. Uh, for me, sport has always been a very important outlet. Um, it works a little bit as like my meditation session in the morning. Um, so it's to go for a run and to just like clear the head and focus on on the body and the performance of you know the body, being grateful for being able to still run or do those exercises and and um, and yeah, that's that has always been the thing that kept me in balance. I've done a lot of races as well and run marathons and having these different challenges in life. So you, yeah, create different focus points. And so it's learning. not just all about work or, you know, if something goes wrong there, that the whole world explodes or falls apart. Like, no, there's, you know, just other things that I want to achieve. Like, this is just one thing and, you know, we'll go through this. So aligning the body, mind, and spirit. Totally, totally. Fantastic, I love that. And you talked about self-awareness. What yeah. makes, how would a leader if they know if they're self-aware or not? <laughs> yeah, how would they know? That's a very good question. <laughs> well, I think once you're self-aware, you know. <laughs> it's, it's hard, I, I get it because I used uh, to be Yeah, it's well. hard. I think one of the, um, one of the greatest exercises that I've once done is just um, is to go to everyone I was working with and to ask them for their feedback. Uh, just with like two, three questions and you know what they really like about me and my, my leadership style um, and where they feel I could improve, like what they didn't like. And it was just so eye-opening because you obviously you see yourself as you know, you have a certain image of yourself in your mind. Um, and that image is just not always how others see you. So I think it's very important. <laughs> it's a very important exercise to make sure that how you want to um, be seen aligns with how do people see you. And so that's one of the exercises that I think whether you know yourself where or you don't know yet, it's a very good exercise to just create that self-awareness. And it also gives you the opportunity to become better because from those weaknesses, this is the points that you can focus on um, to strengthen and grow. Fantastic. Because I, I was the, once thinking that I was self-aware, but I don't I think I was, that's all. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a journey, right? It's a journey. Like you, there's, 
there's still things like I think I'm already very self-aware and yet there's still an entire journey ahead of me. Um, I think it's just being conscious or making that conscious decision to, to work on that self-awareness is, is a great start. And how about those that aren't open to feedback as such? Because I know many people don't enjoy feedback um, yeah. from others. Yeah, totally. It's um, yeah. It's not, it's of course it's not always fun, but it's about being vulnerable and being open um, to receive that feedback. And also, you have to know what you want to create. Like, if you ask feedback, you have to know like why are you getting that feedback? Because you know you want to grow, right? Everybody ultimately, we all want to grow as individuals to be sure that we make a higher impact within our communities, within the companies that we work for, within our world. Um, and and so it's it's just that growth. Um, I think if you're not open to that feedback, um, it's it limits your own your own growth. And it's a shame because yeah, you'll never know what you can achieve. <laughs> what else is possible, right? Well, yeah, what else is possible? Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, and it's good. Like, if, yeah, it's um, it's something you have to be open for, for sure. Um, and even if it's hard, you know, we're creatures of comfort. So we like to play in our comfort zone and we don't want to hear the bad stuff. And, you know, I'm still the leader. And But yeah, that's not where true growth um lies it's it's in being uncomfortable and like getting feedback it's it's uncomfortable but it's going there how would you mm -hmm. advise leaders that want to grow out the comfort zones how would i advise them well well the first thing is to do is uh is to do this little exercise and actually ask them um as the people that they're working with it could be the people that you're working with you could even just do it small, just to tap your feet in the water and just ask family or ask friends of like how they see you um, to to get comfortable, like try it with some people that you feel very comfortable with. Um, and um, yeah, and start there and then you can grow it. Um, that's the first thing. And I think the second thing is just really um, being aware of what you want to create, where you want to go with this. Um, is it because you want to get better or maybe there's a higher position or you have, you know, ambitions or dreams right in front of you. And this is one step that could actually get you one step closer to these dreams, to these ambitions and making them a reality. And you talked about you do work life balance with your clients. Yeah. How did you get into that? Did you have your own suffering of burnout and, and uh, yeah, so I'm I'm a mother. I have two kids, and it was when I was working for a startup in New York. Um, so I was setting up their support teams, and it just struck me, like on my way to work every morning, how a lot of a lot of the people around the school looked so stressed, you know, stressed to drop off their kids. Uh, so like they're in school and then stressed on their way to work and. And I realized that I was just as bad as they were. Like I was also stressed quickly, quickly. I have no time for the tantrums because you have to get on work and then, you know, you arrive at work and it's like work, 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 because then, you know, at 4.30 or, you know, at five, you have to pick them up and then you, and it's, and it was no longer working for me. It's, there was no joy in none of the moments. Uh, that came behind each other. Like no more joy in actually dropping the kids off to school because it was a rush. And no more joy in being at work because I was already stressing out of like, you know, making dinner and, and getting home. So it was, for me, it was about taking a step back and really um, asking myself like, what it is that I want to create, what it is, how I, how, how can I live better, basically? How can I live better and get more fulfillment out of every moment and get more fulfillment of like my journey here in life. When it came down to, to making that decision, what was you going through emotionally? Was it draining, fatigue? 
Um, it was, I, I felt like this inner fire burning and I felt like that inner fire couldn't, like had no voice, like there was nowhere to go. And, you know, and that fire was like growing, growing, it's like burning inside and you're not able to like cool off. Um, so it was just, yeah, what I realized is I was working really hard tirelessly to make somebody else's dream come true um, while I actually had so many dreams of my own that I was putting on the back burner. So it's a question of as well, like how important are my own dreams and following those um, as comparing to playing it safe and, you know, go in and work for someone and get the monthly paycheck and, you know. It's a, it's a good comfort, and it was about stepping out of that comfort, uh, not not having a plan B and not knowing what's next. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I, I'm resonating with that because that's the stage I'm at now as well. Is, oh, do, I carry, do I carry on you know, working for someone else, or am I going to just leap with that leap of faith and create what I want to create, which is the freedom and you know, the, the the life that I want to create. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I can deeply relate to that. One very important lesson that I learned as I was going through that is don't have a plan B. Hmm. Because when you have a plan B and the going gets tough, you're like, oh, okay, this is not working. Let me, you know, let me do this now, or let me go and apply for this job, or let me go somewhere else. So when there's a plan B, it's it's because the plan B is a comfort, right? It's mm. something that you already know and you know it, it will be there and you will be able to get into it quickly again. So it's uh it's about just having the plan A and going all in. Fantastic. Needed that advice so much. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're saying you're creating, what visions and, and what are you creating right now? What I'm creating is I just want to have a bigger impact on on women, on females. You know, I think there's a, a lot of pressure from like pressure that we feel from society as we, you know, have to work and our children have to behave and they have to be intelligent and they have to speak uh, multiple languages and uh, and we have to eat organic and home cooked meals and our house has to be perfect and there's. So there's so much stress and pressure that it's very hard, um, especially once you're like a mom, um, it's very hard to focus. It just feels overwhelming. Like the work demands are um, are piling up. Like then there's all these tools, uh, you know, all the events from the kids side and you also want to be there and show up for your kids. Um, and it's just creating, um, yeah, more, more fulfillment uh, for people from my own journey from where I was. Um, but yeah, just in general, um, more fulfillment because life is so short. Um, and I'm so grateful for, you know, for myself to be here and to be able to live it. And I just, yeah, I was keen to know how do you live your best life and how do you not take any minute for granted basically and make the best out of everything. And that's kind of what I want um, for my clients too, to just, yeah, find that fulfillment at work, but also at home um, and help them with like tools and techniques on, on how to create that for themselves. Mm. Because I have a lot of peer group around me that's you know, like yourselves, working mums, um, or some of my single parents and yeah. they're trying to juggle between um, their entrepreneurship life mm -hmm. as well as the kids life yeah what kind of uh, I guess strategies or routines would you give them yeah well I think first of all it's very important to know for yourself like what's the priority like or what are the priorities um, because I said as I said, like society has lots of expectations mm. um, and we get overwhelmed because we think we need to meet all the criteria. Um, there's this thing of like women cannot have it all. I don't really believe it. It's just about knowing what it is actually that you want because you don't want it all, uh, right? But there's certain things that you want. So knowing what those priorities are is, um, is the first key. Um, and then it's about managing your time. Um, and you can manage your time by, for example, I use my calendar and literally my days are planned 
very uh, methodologically uh, to make sure I get in my exercise. So it's about setting yourself up for success. Like everything that's important for you that happens throughout the day, make sure it's planned into the calendar, um, especially those moments that you want to create for yourself. Um, so that's a first. A second is communication as well. Um, if you have a partner, it's about communicating, for example, over the weekend. Um, if you want to have an hour to yourself to do whatever, whether it's a hobby or go for a walk or clear the mind, um, I think that time is also important. And we often, as mothers, feel guilty of like, no, now it's weekend and I have to be full time with my kids. And I don't think so. You also have to fill up your own cup. So you have to create those moments where you can actually do it. Um, and it's about communicating those needs um, with the people around you that can support you um, and pushing those on the priority list. Wow, I love that. Filling your own cup first. How often do we just um, beat ourselves up for, for not getting things done? Uh, yeah. We don't take out time for ourselves. Exactly. And when you're managing your teams, is yeah. that the same philosophy as well that you use in, in making sure that they they have that balance? Um, I, I know a lot of people that take work home with them. Yeah. After the time they do overtime and they don't spend time for themselves. Yeah, well, there definitely has to be good balance. I mean, as an entrepreneur and also having worked for, for companies, I also take work home, right? Like I've always taken work home, but it's about there is a passion there and there's an impact that you want to make. And it also gives a sense of fulfillment. Like obviously the moment that it's not fulfilling anymore is, you know, is a moment where you have to start questioning and, and like where that comes from. Um, so it's not necessarily that it's an expectation from my, um, from the people that I work with, but it's nice, um, they can count on me, let me put it that way. They can count on me 24-7. Um, and when the going gets tough, I think it's always nice to see a team rallying together when something, you know, a new update has to be shipped out or there's crunch time that they're also willing to, to put in that time. And it's, um, I believe it's a give and take within an organization, within working with people. Um, it's about showing your flexibility if somebody has to leave earlier for the kids or for whatever reason to okay that without, you know, much further ado, um, because that's where you build up the trust and the respect as well. And you will know that if there's a late night coming, that they will also be there to support you. Do you study any other leadership teachers or mentors or work with others? Sorry, ask me that question. Do you work with other? Do you work with other mentors or leadership mentors or yeah, yeah, I have, yeah, I, I have a mentor that I work with, um, and you know, I have a couple, um, and that sometimes changes over time as well. I think for me on my journey, I've, and it's what I see my clients experience a lot as well. Um, I sometimes had a hard time asking for help or asking somebody else's input coming from a place of like, oh, I should know this. Um, and that really changed over the last couple of years, where I was like, oh, but if I get this person's input as well, that might broaden my perspective on this particular matter. Um, so I think a mentor can also be on something very specific that you're dealing with and asking some people within your network to kind of share their expertise or share their learnings with you um, so you can become more well-rounded in making certain decisions. I ask this because um, as entrepreneurs or those that are in entrepreneurship, we often find ourselves learning from you know, Gary Vee, Tony Robbins, T.R. Becker, <laughs> all the big names, right? Is there one that you've really changed your life in a way? There was one person in, in the like one of the big names anyone really <laughs> doesn't have to be the big names <laughs> uh, sometimes, sometimes the biggest learnings are the, aren't the ones that making the the big noise right yeah well there's there's obviously there's um there's a lot of people within my surroundings that i um 
did I look up to or where I see um, a skill set that I don't necessarily have, um, but that I admire and that I remember to put a little bit more of that in my life, especially within the entrepreneurs. Um, there's a couple of entrepreneurs that I'm very close with. And um, yeah, they're very special. There's a very special type of people, like the true entrepreneurs. I think it's, uh, yeah, I can see there is, there. They're in it, they take risks. Um, they take risks, yeah. I think that's what sets them apart. We're not all, I am not such a big risk taker, but it reminds me to, to take that risk a little bit more often. And if there was the learning from taking risks, what, have you asked them? you know, what, what makes them take that risk? What, what, what makes them decide to take risks? Uh, well, I think it's, I mean, obviously there's, um, they do the research, right? Like they, they know what they're doing, um, but it's just an intuition as well um, to go with. And it's not needing this buffer of like, oh, and if this fails, it's okay being able to say that because like as an entrepreneur, like if you're investing um, in another company, um, there's obviously always the risk of losing your money. And it's about being just totally okay if that happens. Wow. You're going all in, <laughs> going all in basically. Uh, okay, fantastic. Just so, wondering yeah. what else, what else they would, um... What else sets them apart from, I guess, the average or the people that want to get to their position? Oh, well, I think they're visionaries as well. Mm. Uh, like they do have brand ideas. Like, yeah, they're they're visionaries for sure. Um, but they take bold risks, um, unattached to the outcome, and unattached to the opinions of others. Um, I think it's fine. Um, that others express opinions and I think it's fine for you to hear it, but it's about um, making sure it's not affecting your own livelihoods and, and pushing forward some of those dreams. And has there been where times where you've um, dealt with the consequences with decisions you made poorly? How did you kind of deal with those um, decisions? Say that one more time. Has there been times where you made decisions where yes. you kind of feel like it's a bad one? And how did you deal with those? Uh, a bad one? Well, I think it's... Um, at the moment, I would say I make decisions of like, oh, this is what I should do, but I don't do it immediately. Mm. Because it's, you know, it's, you know, a level out of my comfort zone again um and it's it's just like remembering that to to question myself when i want to do something and i have everything lined up it's like you know what's what's that you know what's at play here like why what's the risk um and sometimes we're we're actually scared of our own um our own growth like how our own potential we're sometimes scared of our own potential so we self-sabotage um, so all the decisions that I that were bad decisions, um, I don't think so. It's just like more decisions need to be made. Um, so it's it's just more, um, and having that display, displaying that decisiveness uh, even more. Something I'm working up every day. <laughs> and you talk about self sabotage. How do you manage yeah. those um, when you do? You, are you aware that you're making them? Yeah, yeah, it's about, it's about self-awareness. Yeah, I still sabotage myself, but I'm very aware um, when it happens. Um, I, you know, I do a download every day of my day, like what went well of my day, what, um, what could have gone better, uh, what do I want to focus on the next day. Um, so I, when I do this download, it's, yeah, they come up, the self-sabotaging habits, um, come up and and yeah and that's then one that we can take forward because it's about growing every day and doing better tomorrow or being a better person tomorrow 
the reason I say that is because there's always a predictive um, there's a predictive pattern in how we self sabotage ourselves. Mm, yeah. And once you know or are aware of parts of it, it's very very revealing. Yeah. Um, I can't remember how many steps there are, but um, one of my business partners, he's always there's always a time when he's he goes aloof when he's yeah. overwhelmed. But he thinks that he's delegated the task to someone, but he doesn't check on it because he thinks he's delegated it. So he also, I think he says something like in his step 17 or something like that, is where he goes aloof and he kind of thinks, oh, someone else is taking care of that until someone else chases him up and goes, have you got around to doing this yet? And he's like, oh, no, I thought you did it. <laughs> yeah. And there's this certain pattern that plays out every single time where when I chased him up I was like hey bro did you get around to doing this task and he was like I thought you was doing it but that's an important learning so <laughs> you, have to, you have to become aware of what step 16 is yes. so you can be proactive and making sure that you don't take it or let it go to step 17 or the other previous six, um, 16 steps that he had yeah so it's it's being like one step ahead and i think definitely if you're in a in a partnership and like it's you know like that in business but it's like that in within relationships as well mm. it's um it's knowing um that other person very well so you can kind of proactively tackle whatever that might be coming because yes we, we do live in patterns like um in a, in a lot of things like it's for the self-sabotaging um, but it's for a lot of other things as well. And it's about helping the other break that pattern. And tell us or become about how, a how you um, made decisions to keep moving countries. I mean, that's a big thing, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I think it's... Um, I think it's just part of me. I think it's a, it's a way of I was born. Like my parents always let me go on these international camps when I was very young. So at a very young age, I was exposed to um, to other cultures, to other countries, and and I just love it. I think it's so inspiring and uh, to learn about how a family works in like Germany or like about some habits or rituals in Australia, or whatever. Um, so I knew when I was 18, I wanted to go abroad. Um, and my dad said, well, you can go abroad, but not right now. I first want you to have a degree and then I unleash you into this world. Uh, so I was not very happy with that decision, but like, okay. So I got my degree and um, I had to do an internship um, to get my final degree in place. And so from, the, from that moment onwards, the internship was out away. Um, and I never got back home. <laughs> so London happened by accident. I wanted to go to Dubai. I wanted to go a little further. Uh, so London happened by accident. And yeah, I was at the start of my career. And so I stayed there a little too long, maybe. Um, the New York was driven for by work. Um, and now Portugal is, is by choice. Um, is to actually create that life um, or to have those elements that, that are important, like to have the ocean close by, uh, to be able to have that sun um, and, um, yeah, and, and include those elements that were missing before. Mm. And was there a big reason why you chose to go into the path you're doing now? Why'd you do what you do? Why'd you keep what you do? Oh, I, um, yeah, it's, it's just so eye opening. It's, it, it's broadens my own perspective of the world. And I cannot imagine, I cannot imagine it any other way. Um, I have total respect for friends who, who stay in Belgium and, and are living the life that I was supposed to live, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's it's just not for me. It's um, I, yeah, I love meeting people from other countries, and from the moment you're in like these international hubs like London and New York, you really yeah get to know people from all over the world, um, and that's that's what I love. 
So that's, that's, that's what you drives you every day? Oh, well, yeah. Well, no, I have uh, bigger goals that drive me every day. What's your bigger uh, goals? It's just like more part of it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I have my mom who said a lot of the times uh, she's calling, she's like, well, this time, don't you just want to come home? Um, but it's like, no, like, why? Why would I come home? I know everything at home. Like here, I have like a whole new country to explore. Um, so it's it's fun. I, I like I like to live that way. Also for my kids, it gives them such a broad perspective, and it's you know they know so much about the world already that I didn't know at age seven or at age yeah. four. Um, and I think that hopefully that will help them make more well-rounded humans as well that in their turn can make a positive impact in this world that's fantastic so you're creating a legacy yeah well that's that's what we want right <laughs> yeah, absolutely of course that's, I mean, that's somebody what, that's, remembers me <laughs> yeah i mean that's the that's the part of it and uh, i think most people take yeah. it for granted um they kind of forget about it that they you know that they, they have a legacy to leave behind but whether it's one you know how would they be remembered I think yeah. that's something that I always go with is, if I was to leave the world tomorrow, you know, how would I would be want to be remembered? Someone that yeah. made a difference in someone else's life, just a little bit difference. You know, I'm quite happy with that. It's a, it's a very good question to become self, you know, self-awareness question. It As is. You know, what, what difference would you have, you know, what do you want to make in this world? Um, and it's, in so many different circles, like there's so many different circles. You got, you know, just your family or just the community. There's, there's so much impact that we can make. Um, what it often is with us humans, we're, we're scared of other humans because we're scared that they will hurt us. So we kind of like look up. Um, but I think if you can open up and actually see that we're all one, um, I think yeah that that opens up a lot more to making a difference in each other's world. Fantastic. And if people wanted to connect with you, where could they find you? Yeah, I have a website. Uh, it's www.luisaito.com. I am active on Instagram, which is just at Louise Um You can email me, hello at uh, So yeah, I'm, yeah, I think can be found. <laughs> Fantastic. If those are the last, I guess, pointers or advice for those that are seeking work-life balance as well as leading their own life, what, mm -hmm. was, what would you suggest? Or yeah, well, first of all, knowing what your priorities are um, and what you actually want to create. Um, and then second of all, making sure that from those priorities that you really manage your calendar like a pro, um, and make sure that those times that you need for yourself to fill up your own cup are scheduled in and are seen as a sacred time. And just, yeah, to take really good care of yourself and your own health. Um, because once you're out of balance, there's only so much that you can give. So it's important to make sure that you stay, um, stay full, that the cup stays full so you can uh, keep on giving freely to others. Fantastic. Thank you, Louise, for your time and your expertise. Yes, of course. Thank you so much for having me. So remember that to, I guess, subscribe to my podcast and check out the next episodes. Thank you so much.